Yeah. Perfection. Love it. We're starting. See, I would have never done this on my own. I would have never had the courage to say, oh my God, I'm taking four weeks off and sitting at home. And in that, I discovered something that was completely almost now alien. So you have to have that introspection. Just the fact that I now had so much time to alter my whole routine and what I woke up for every morning, um, you know, it, it makes you feel very different and inevitably leads to some introspection. I was with nature, I was walking, I was reading, uh, I saw a few films, I talk to friends of mine. Oh, you have to see this. This is an amazing book. These are the nest gatherers. Everyone's got so used to leading a preconditioned idea about what life should be and what the ladder is and what success means. And along the way, you've got so fogged and clouded that you're doing whatever, something else, and you're on this treadmill. So this was an opportunity for everybody in whatever way, hit pause and think about the life you want to live. I began to think of fashion and what fashion we needed to lead this life as opposed to just this very extravagant, beautiful, however fine fashion that is for big weddings and parties. So many questions came up at once. What would be the purpose of myself as a designer? What is the purpose of my company? Once I got into fashion, and I started traveling around, you know, looking at craft clusters. I started to notice when I was spending time more in smaller towns, how beautifully people were draped. And it started to create a form in my head. There was amazing, you know, almost like a ballooning of fabric and it was sensual, like a beautiful sari. To try and be able to create these forms in contemporary clothing, so it's not only about embellishment and textile, but also replicating some of the forms that only we Indians did. Indian craft is so beautiful and our craftsmen are superb. Um, and it goes from textile to techniques and also to, of course, all the surface embellishment that we do, which is just almost mind blowing, not just for what they do, but to have the patience and the resilience to sit there and sometimes work on something beautiful for a year. I mean, I've loved the way we've used chicken curry in a light and contemporary way. I think that's my favorite because also it becomes like textile. Now we're doing a whole lot of other things as well. You know, we use Bengal embroidery, Zardozi, shadow work. You can use any technique and make it contemporary. That's up to the designer. Who would have thought two months back that we were going to be so obsessed with masks. So they would become such an important part of our everyday life, a mandatory thing. It's part of our health. It's part of our safety. It's to prevent other people from falling sick. And obviously, because we'd already started wearing masks, the first thing is to approach it with the way I approach design. And that is the functional part of it. So from a point of construction, I said a mask must have a shape. I needed it to sit on either side of the nostril, uh, the nose. This is boned to hold it flat over the nose so it's not pressing you down. Because if you wear glasses or dark glasses, it's immediately fogging your glasses because the air is escaping. There's a little invisible zipper. So if you need to have a drink, you can zip it up or open it up. We also said we probably need different sizes. And that's basically the TT mask. So it sits, it's very comfortable. I can breathe beautifully because of this. 
it's quilted to give it a very nice shape. So it sits like a shape. And then we played with different, different variations of it. And this was a little fun one where we took Aswarovsky's, the fun thing, the little four mouth, because we saw a video of this woman wearing a mask in the Middle East and then she did a whole face up. It looked really amazing. If she was to do that on this, she would be, I dare say, almost perfect because from a distance, it would give the illusion that she just had a face on. And I think that's going to be the future of masks as well. And then we did one last one where, for women who want to hide this ugly strap, you can match your print or the fabric, and this will sit over it. So this holds it over your ears, but then this fabric, you just tie it, and it can be longer, it can be shorter, it can be done to match a scarf. We're thinking of clever ways where the mask becomes a really fun accessory, and it's not just a medical necessity, but soon, like everything else that we humans have done, a thing of beauty to compliment you, to make you feel better, and to mask you if you need it, and to keep you safe most of all. Through this life, uh, through what we push ourselves to be, what we've uh, tried to position ourselves, or you know, the whole treadmill, I think a lot of masks have come on as we just go without feeling, you know into whether ours or somebody else's dream of how a life should be lived and what should be accomplished and what are the measures of accomplishment. When you reflect, you're going to try and live differently, you will create differently. I think there's a, got to be a greater connect to our own selves and our roots and our own culture. And so by going inward and closer to oneself, I think therefore, metaphorically, one has removed many masks in this time while creating a physical mask better physical mask than masking your whole self forever. Tuisha, could you just show us what could what, uh, what could be the other uh, frame that we could use? If there's a couch or, or, a, or a chair somewhere else that Nianta, can you switch your uh, video on for Tarun's? Each section will be shot on 4K 60 frames. I'll be holding the second camera. So, how do you want me to... Ah, so, the perspective of the shot is perfect. You just need to go a little bit closer, but that's it. One, two, three, four. And if you can just give a clap once before you answer this. Do I have to clap?